there's been zero progress in modern medicine for brain damage, which, you know, the old word for TBI, traumatic brain injury. Um, and, you know, my spec scan and my eyes and stuff, you can see the damage in my brain. I mean, it's different. You know, the tissue is damaged. Well, ah, oh, man, so... In my head, I'm telling Andrew, like, bro, I don't have mental issues. I'm fine. I, PTSD is not a thing. I'm good. Um, and we start talking, and he's asking the questions to make me think. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, well, look, man, just uh, you know, write down some questions for the medicine. Is it, you're going to be able to talk to it. It'll it'll react with you. I mean, it's inside you. I'm like, okay. And we get to talking about like some of the endurance. Um, events I've done over the years, iron triathlons, then the 200 milers. And, you know, like earlier, you know, Melissa said, you know, a lot of times endurance athletes are either running away from something or towards something. And I was a little bit of both for sure. And at the time, if you asked me, dude, why in the, are you running a 200 mile marathon? Like what's, why? And my answer was, let's see if I can. Was that true? Looking back, probably not. I think for the longest time, the best feelings, like, and I don't mean like, the greatest feelings I had came from pain. Uh, after getting blown up, like I said, man, I don't, I don't have good coordination in my left hand, left foot sometimes. Um, I don't know. I just felt like, Maybe I was just looking, you know, you want to feel something. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, I think I'm pretty good at convincing myself of things. Mm -hmm. you know, if I need to, you know what I mean? Like, like selection. It's only three weeks. I can do anything for three weeks. That's why I pass selection. Um, I just, that's how I look at things. Like, if I want to do something, I will convince myself. This is how I am going to do it, or whatever, right? So... I think, you know, I had convinced myself I had no PTSD. And and I didn't suffer from PTSD. My daily life was unaffected for the most part by any PTSD type stuff. So like I said, so I'm talking to Andrew and he's he's like, Hey, I really want you to just think about your motivation for doing all that endurance stuff. I'm like, oh, I mean it's behind me, bro. I'm not really into it anymore. Freaking it's just another thing I did. He's like, Yeah. But every hobby that you've told me about required some sort of pain just to participate. It's like, I just want you to think about it. Okay. Well, so we go, and, and of course, you know, everybody in Tijuana, Trevor Millar, who you've had on, um, just awesome, just an awesome bunch of people, super professional. I've never seen civilians that behave so professionally, so organized. I felt safe. And I think that's a big deal with a lot of guys with I began is they're scared of it, right? Like, I had never done psychedelics before. Um, growing up, I had buds that would, you know, drop acid or eat some shrooms. Wasn't my thing. I wasn't interested. Um, I was too busy being really, <laughs> really bad. Um, it, it wasn't my thing. So I began was my first psychedelic experience, which they thought was funny anyway because... Typically, folks have dabbled in other things, you know. Well, so as I got into it and started seeing the visions and seeing and feeling things, I couldn't help it. Remember I said I tried really hard not to go there with any bias? So Primo Johnny talk, told me about speaking with his mom. His mother died when he was young, too, right? And somewhere in the mix of things, I quit worried about my TBI and started wanting to, to talk to my mom. And so for your listeners that don't know, in your visions that I began, like you can, you can see relatives. In some cases, you see relatives you never met, like DNA, ancestral. There's a theory that memories can be passed down in a DNA too. And so sometimes people report seeing their great grandfather or talking to them, right? Having a conversation that is as real as any they ever had with them. So like I said, man, 
I just got it in my head that I wanted to talk to her. And then I like kind of came to and it all stopped. I mean, they had been pretty intense visions, man. I had seen what I am fairly certain was, you know, an angelic creature, uh, potentially a, a no shit a angel. I, I mean, I'm, I'm still under the, you know, the spell of it all. So it's not like I have a clear, you know, picture of reality. And I'm aware of that, right? That's another cool thing I thought about. I began is that you can, like, almost turn it off and mm -hmm. at least think. It's not like you're absorbed in it. There's nothing fearful about it for me at all. Like, I didn't feel out of control. I'm not a super control freak anyway. I'm kind of like, let's see what happens type of dude anyway, you know? Um, so I remember, you know, Trevor and everybody saying that after everyone settles down in their initial really high vision, their active stage, we're going to go down to one person watching you guys. And for your audience, like I said, super professional. I began can be dangerous to the heart um, if, you know, to unfit people. So you're hooked up to uh, heart rate monitors, EKG, all that stuff. And I came to and I was like, um, oh, so I began can make you sick. Uh, they call it purging. Mm -hmm. right? And after my first initial visions and stuff, I purged. And it felt like I had purged for like five minutes. And had a little, you know, everybody has their little pail. So if you do throw up, you can throw up in it. And I thought I threw up a couple of times. And I threw up, thought, thought I threw up not long after we took the medicine. So it's, it's capsules for the audience. And um, so I started wondering, did I throw up my medicine? I had the same experience. Oh, really? And I'm like, this can't be over. I'm not done. It's not what I came here for. So I look around, and I miss the cue. There's one person there. There's only one person there. And Trevor had told us that after we all settled down, and the, the crazy visual phase was, was, was subsided, he's like, could you move around? You guys will be moving around. You won't even know it. Um, not walking or anything, because people don't know. I mean, it makes it where you can barely walk. You're like, almost like a full body Parkinson's patient, right? <laughs> like, you can't hardly get up and move. It's like you're going to get up and go play in traffic on that stuff. Uh, it must be some kind of awesome safety mechanism, right? Like, keeps you from running out in the jungle and getting eaten by whatever. Um, so, again, I missed the cue, man. And, and I'm looking around, and the, the young lady who was there, she was the newest on the team. Her name is Sandra. And I was like, Miss Sandra, I think I threw up my medicine. I need you to call Trevor. I think I need a booster. Because I had heard about guys who got boosters who they just didn't get enough. I was like, and she's like, she didn't speak as good as English as some of the others. And, you know, you're whispering because you're in the room with other other folks. And she's like, yeah, yeah, okay. I was like, no, seriously, you need to call Trevor. And she's like, yeah, yeah, not a problem. I'll go downstairs. Well, then I fell asleep. I can't sleep when I began, right? I wasn't asleep. I thought I was asleep. I laid back down. And so when I opened my eyes again, she's gone. And the next staff member's there. And they're on three-hour rotations. Again, I'm not computing this. Trevor had told us all this, but it wasn't making sense to me. Tell the next guy. I'm like, hey, man. And then I, was, I remember being a little aggravated that he didn't know. Right? fire guard right like mm -hmm. you know one dude's up when you come on duty and i go off duty i brief you up on everything i see well they didn't do that so i'm getting frustrated i'm like you know i'm telling you right you need it and I'm, and I'm like what time is it and he's like it doesn't matter what time it is and, you know just back into it and i'm like no you need to call trevor <laughs> <laughs> so i fall asleep again and in my head if you can't sleep on i began i must have thrown it up well, later on, I find out that I was still pretty active when I thought I was asleep. The medicine just didn't want me to see whatever it was doing. Best explanation I got. Well, the next time I woke up, the sun's up. I can tell through the windows, even though they're pretty blacked out, that it is daylight outside. And um, everyone else, they're, they're given an IV and a, a medicinal cocktail to help 
transition you off the ibogaine and so you can go sleep and and, and sleep it off and, and have what they refer to as the gray day and some people call it something like a hangover well, uh, i don't know i think you just it's kind of you just feel for me it was just blah i was just tired i didn't feel bad i just felt exhausted but so they're they're trying to give me this cocktail, and I'm telling the the um, one of the main medical practitioners, this is medical staff for folks that are listening, man. It's like I said, very professional. And I explained to her what's going on. She speaks good English. She goes, "Okay, I'll call Trevor." And I finally, I was like, "Thank you," you know. She comes back upstairs a few minutes later. She's like, "Hey, you know what? We're not going to give you the medicine. Trevor will be here in a few minutes." No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.